They came for him at 6.12 a.m. Three unmarked SUVs, blacked out windows, tactical gear. His name wasn't in any police database. He had no criminal record. No one had ever accused him of anything. Until now. The charge? Being flagged as a high-risk terrorist by an AI system he had never heard of. Governments across the world are quietly experimenting with predictive threat algorithms. Software designed to sift through billions of data points and identify people who might commit crimes in the future. It sounds like science fiction, like the plot of Minority Report. But the technology is here, it's real, and in some countries, it's already being used. Here's how it works. These systems pull from dozens of sources. Facial recognition scans from city surveillance cameras, location history from your phone, your search engine queries, social media posts, even the speed at which you type. They cross-reference your behavior with massive databases of known threat actors, and then, using machine learning, they generate a risk score. If that score crosses a secret threshold, you're quietly placed into a monitor list, or worse, a terrorism watch list. This isn't a theory. Documents leaked in 2024 revealed that multiple nations, including the United States, the United Kingdom, China, and several Middle Eastern countries, have been developing AI-powered pre-crime tools for years. Some of these programs run openly under the banner of public safety. Others operate in complete secrecy, buried under layers of classified intelligence budgets. The danger? Algorithms don't understand context. You search for information about a terrorist group for a college research paper? The AI doesn't care. You happen to be in the same location as a person of interest? The AI logs it. You visit a foreign country on a certain watch list during the wrong week? The AI sees a pattern. And once it flags you, clearing your name isn't just hard, it's nearly impossible. Take the case of a London-based journalist who was detained at Heathrow Airport in 2023. She had been researching extremist groups for a documentary, combing through propaganda sites, online manifestos, and encrypted chat rooms. Her AI-generated profile labeled her as an ideological risk, complete with a 93% terrorism threat score. She wasn't charged. She wasn't told exactly what triggered the score. She was simply denied entry into three different countries afterward, with no appeal process. In China, the situation is even more extreme. Their integrated joint operations platform monitors everything from online chats to religious activity. In one case, a man was detained for preparing to commit terrorism because his facial recognition profile matched a group photo from a protest he didn't even attend. He had simply walked by the area that day. The United States isn't immune either. Homeland Security has been testing algorithms that fuse travel data, banking transactions, and social media activity to generate predictive traveler risk scores. A single flagged financial transfer, even something as innocent as sending money to a friend overseas, can land you on a secondary screening list that you may never know exists until you miss your flight or get pulled into a back room at customs. The AI systems aren't inherently evil. Their defenders argue they can prevent tragedy. If a real terrorist is caught before they act, it's a win. But that logic ignores the collateral damage, the ordinary people whose lives are wrecked by a false prediction. Because unlike a human investigator, an AI doesn't have empathy, intuition, or the ability to see the bigger picture. It just sees patterns in numbers. And in a world flooded with digital data, everyone's patterns start to look suspicious. And then there's the secrecy. Governments rarely disclose exactly how these algorithms work. They hide behind national security exemptions, refusing to explain what data they collect, what patterns they search for, or what the threshold is for labeling someone a threat. You can't defend yourself against an accusation you can't even see. Critics warn of a chilling effect on free speech. If you know your search history could be used to label you dangerous, do you still feel comfortable looking up controversial topics? Do you still attend protests? Do you still post your opinions online? It's a form of self-censorship through fear. Not because you've done anything wrong, but because an invisible algorithm might think you have. Imagine waking up tomorrow to find your bank account frozen, your flights canceled, and your employer re-evaluating your position. All because a machine decided you were a risk. No trial, no jury, no defense. Just a red flag in a database you'll never be allowed to see. 
The journalist detained at Heathrow is still fighting to clear her record. The man in China never got a hearing. And the American flagged for a single bank transfer? He says the experience was like being punished for a crime that only existed in a computer's imagination. This is the double-edged sword of predictive AI in national security. It can save lives. It can stop real threats. But when it gets it wrong, and it will get it wrong, the human cost is devastating. We used to think guilt required evidence. Now, in the age of algorithms, guilt can be nothing more than a number on a screen. The future isn't just about machines replacing jobs. It's about machines replacing judgment. And if we let them, they'll replace justice too. This is Virtuadamus.